Uh, this morning, I'm really excited to share with you on some things that the Lord has been speaking to my heart. One of them is the pursuit of excellence. The pursuit of excellence. And uh, during the course of the week, and recently, God has been dealing with me because there are things that I used to say I am not able to do. Or I can't. But I've been reminded in the scripture, can do. Can do. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I recognize that God actually speaks to the strength in you. If you will remember, uh, I think it was Gideon when he was there piling up, storing away things so that um, the enemy will not come because his father and they were on another area. So he went in a place separate by himself where he was storing up things so that his family could receive them. And the angel just passed by and he says, thou mighty man of valor. He didn't see himself as a mighty man of valor. What he saw himself, he saw himself as a weakling. He said, you're talking to me? <laughs> he said, listen, my parents are nobodies, you know. The tribe that I come from, nothing good is in them. He says, so I am just here hiding away. But the angel said, you are a mighty man of valor. He did not even recognize that. But God speaks to us out of the strength that is inside of us. And there are many uh, people like that whom God spoke to. But he spoke, they saw themselves as weak. But God spoke to them out of their strength. Let's just bow. Father, we just pause in your presence to say thank you. We thank you because of your goodness, your mercies, and your great love towards us. Father, we humble ourselves this morning because of who you are. We are thankful because you are our righteousness. You are the strength of our lives. And so, Lord God, as we commit our lives to you, we pray, O oh God, that you will teach us. We ask, Father, that you will lead us, that you will cause us to walk in the light, O oh God, that you have ordained that we should walk in. So, Father, minister unto us your peace, minister unto us your divine grace and favor and quickness, we pray. This is not to excite your people, but, Father, to bring about change, to equip them so that they will be able to do that which you have called us all to do. So cover us, Lord, minister to us, and we thank you for doing it in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Now, we are talk talking about <laughs> the pursuit of excellence. What is excellence? What it is? And... Let me just declare this briefly, that God is calling us to attention in this day. He is calling us to a deeper life of commitment with him. Those of us who hear the voice of God can no longer be willing to live a life of just good enough. <laughs> 
We can never let ourselves be satisfied again with the mediocre and the ordinary. For heaven's message is clear. A casual attitude towards life will lead us only to a place of disappointment and defeat if we want to realize God's best for our lives, we must answer his call and launch out on a lifelong pursuit of excellence. And when we look at excellence, we never really attain to excellence. We never attain to it. Because Today's excellence will be tomorrow's mediocrity. In other words, what I'm saying is that excellence is a lifestyle. <laughs> it is not just something that we do because you may do it today and not do it tomorrow. But it is a lifestyle. It is the way we live. And if we are living in that lifestyle, what we are going to find is that because of our excellence, people will be drawn to us. And when people are drawn to you, they will not be seeking how they could get away from you. Why? Because they will be endeavoring to be like you are. I have got to come to this place because there are people that I look up to and want it to be like them. I hear this one preach. I want to preach like them. I wanted to act the same way they acted. Until the Lord began speaking to me. And he said, son, I have made you a unique person. You need to be you. That changed my life. I no longer try to be like anybody else. The only person that I try to be like today is Jesus Christ. And let me assure you that if the church have been teaching our people to be like Christ, the conflict that there are in the church today would never be there. Why? Because we are trying to outdo each other. We are not trying to help. We are not trying to put the body together. And that's what called. God called us to do. He says that the gifts that he has given to us is so that we must edify the body of Christ. How many of you understand that the body of Christ is not just Rhema? There are many others who belong to the body of Christ. But let me get into this. I'll have to cut some things real short here. But let's look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, I think we'll look at first. Uh, one of the things that we need to understand it is that it, it is God who called us. It is God who created us. How did he create us? In his image after his likeness. What does this say here? And God said, let us make man in our image. And in declaring that God said, what we need to understand, 
before God said there to himself, God spoke to other things. You remember God said, let there be light. And there was light. You remember God created the firmament. He created the stars, the moon, and everything else. And then when God created the animals, he created the fishes, the birds of the air, and he was finished creating everything in five days. Then God recognized his main purpose of creating everything was man. But as yet, man was not created. So guess what? The earth was created for man. Created for man to live and for man to be excellent on the earth. Are you hearing me? Why? Because God says, let us make man. And then he says, after, in our image, after our likeness, and let them have, let them have what? Let them have dominion. How many dominion people do we have today? God created us to have dominion in the earth. Not dominion over one another. <laughs> uh, we understand that God says that the man is the head. All right? So because the man is the head, the man dominates the woman. Right, guys? No. Mm -mm. The man is the head. But I had an unsafe friend who told me many years ago, he said, Pax, the man is the head, but the woman is the neck that turns the head around. <laughs> when I heard that, I was amazed coming from an unsaved man. So, I understand that because when God says that he created man in his image and in his likeness, that is man, man and woman. All right? And God says, not let him, but let them have dominion in the earth. So, women, you have dominion too. Just as the men. All right? And so God says, let us make them. After God created everything, he spoke to what he wanted each thing to come from. When he was ready to create man, guess who he spoke to? He spoke to himself. So God created us in his image after his likeness created us just like himself. How many of you ever heard that, well, I am still flesh, so I must fail or I can't be perfect? You know, uh, I can't be holy because I'm still living in the flesh. Do you recognize that you are more spirit than flesh? When God said, let us make men in our image after our likeness, he was not talking about the house that we live in. He created Man, spirit, and then he took the dust of the earth and he built a house and put man to live inside of that. This is not the man. 
This is only the, the house that the man lives in. And if we will understand our God, how he operates, then we are going to flow just like him. My desire is to operate just like my father. And folks, it can happen. We can do it. We can operate just as God operates. God says, let us make them and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now that I establish that, that we were created in the image and likeness of God, and I'm talking about pursuing excellence. Let us understand this, that our God is an excellent God. <laughs> and hear me, God is excellent all by himself. He's not looking to go anywhere. But God is already an excellence God. God is in a place where we can never arrive at. But we are always pressing toward excellence. Are you following me? Listen, it is not something that we try today and then we fall back tomorrow one step forward and three steps backward. It's not like that. God, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an excellent God. And God is able to do excellently and he is able to make us excellent. But we have to desire it and we have to pursue after this excellence. Now, let me just throw some things in here. You know, because um, when we look at our world today, for instance, I'm in the prison and I see men come into prisons. And do you recognize that a person who commits crime, who are the first people that are affected by his crime? We think it's the person that he commit the crime against. But his family are the first victims. Are you hearing me? Uh, today, we are told that uh, 90% of the children of prisoners will enter prison. 90%. And we ask, a lot of times people say, well, it's because of the training they got from their parents. Then they also tell us it's because uh, they grew up in single homes because they were absentee fathers. And hear me, that is true. It is true because wherever you find they are single parent, the children are rarely off balance. Are you hearing me? It takes God to bring that back together. But we hold on to that. And so we will expect and we will continue to declare, listen man, it's because of the parents that the children are in this position. Not necessarily. Because hear what? After the child has grown, we know that they were indoctrinated 
by the appearance. But could you as a believer declare that that's how my parents taught me, so that's how I have to be? We can't. Why? Because we have changed parents. Hello? Samuel Parks, this is, is no longer my father. He was my earthly father. But Almighty God, Jehovah, that's my father. Because he is my father, I have chosen to go after the teachings of my father. To accept what my father has taught. Because I am spirit. I am not walking after the desires of my father. One of the things that I normally say to people is that when I sit to counsel people, I don't counsel them out of my education. I don't counsel them out of my training. I don't counsel them out of the wisdom that I have. But I counsel them supernaturally. But perhaps how you could do that? You just are ordinary man. No, I'm not ordinary. My father is not an ordinary man. My father is almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. He is my creator. He is all our creator. And because he is, we can endeavor to walk in the will of our father. And why I have to be very careful in counseling is that if I counsel people in the wrong way, I have to answer to God. And the Bible says it is a terrible thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. I refuse to lead anybody wrong in counseling them. But Let's move on. Uh, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 29. And we look at verse 11. And here he is saying, For I know your thoughts, that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God is saying, I know the thoughts. Why would God know the thoughts? Simple, because he created us. He knows what we have on the inside of us. And because of what he knows, the Bible says that he thinks of us. Oh, God, that's great. Are you not feeling good to know that God thinks about you? Hear me. There is nothing that could ever happen to you that misses God. He is aware. And a number of times, God protects us. He delivers us. And we never saw what was coming to us. <laughs> you never see it. That's why every morning I get up, I open my eyes, I thank God for life. <laughs> hey, it's he who protected me last night. There were things that were coming against me that I never saw. 
I remember years ago, uh, folks came into our house. I went to bed after three in the morning. And regardless of what time I go to bed, I am up by five. That morning, five o'clock, I was not up. I heard the phone ring. And I tried picking up the phone. But I was too groggy. They actually put us to sleep. Then the phone rang again. That's because my neighbor, accustomed seeing me outside. And at that time, I was not outside, but he saw the windows being broken. So when he called, he said, Mr. Parks, you all right? I said, yes, I'm okay. He said, everybody okay? I said, yes, let me go by and see. So I went. Everybody was in their room. And good, still sleeping. So I said, yes. He said, uh, just come outside at your front. When I got there, I saw the windows open. When I looked, I didn't see my cassette player or something. It's so long, I can't remember the name now. <laughs> I didn't see it there. The TV was there. Everything else was there. Some monies that we had on the, on the table, we checked that and we left it just to get up to go and pay the bills. All that was gone. And I am looking, and everything was intact. But then, when I got to the table, I saw a scissors. You know what happened? Those guys came into my room. Because I was asleep, and they realized I didn't see them, so I didn't know anything. They just put the scissors on the table and walked out. Because they came in with nothing. So they had to take something in their hand to defend themselves. So God kept me sleeping. Because I'm always saying, if someone come into my house, somebody have to answer. And I must be the one to answer. So God realized, hey, you are sleeping, so let me protect you. I will answer for you right now. And God protected me. Listen, that's what God does for us. So we always have something to give God thanks for. Always. You might not see what happened. But you could always thank God for life. Every time you wake up, you could praise God for life. I praise him for life. I praise him for health and strength. Hey, because I am not going to be lying on no bed and can't get up to do the will of God. Why? The word of God tells me, he says, I shall live and not die to declare the works of, of the Lord. You can't lie down on a bed and declare the works of God. There are some people who could do it. But this guy can't. Hello? Because I got to be moving. I got to be able to touch somebody. Physically, not only spiritually. And so, we need to understand who we really are and to know that God has thoughts concerning us. But let us look at something that followed that, that is more, that is connected to this. Let's look at verse 11 and 12. 
After he said, I know the thoughts that I think concerning you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Verse 11 says, verse 12 says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. God is moving us into excellence. He's moving on. He says, I know the thoughts I have for you. They are thoughts of good and not evil. To give you an expected end. But here, I'm letting you know this. You go and call upon me. And I shall answer. Pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. God is giving us the assurance. Hello? He's saying, listen, you call upon me, I will hear you. I will answer you. So we need to know who our God is. If we are going to walk in this excellence, we must know him. We must know what he is able to do for us. We must know that he is always with us and that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. You seek him, you will find him. In other words, God is saying, listen, I am your excellent God. You call on your excellent God and he will hear you excellently. <laughs> God will support our excellency in him. All right, let's go quickly to Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Okay, uh, yes, 81 and verse 8. Here, yeah, this is God speaking to us. He says, hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel. God is begging us. Hear. Yeah. God is saying, hear him. Hear what he's saying to us. Are we willing to listen and to hear what God is saying? Hear me. He's not far from us, you know. He's right where you are. And he's saying, hear me. Oh, my people. And I will testify unto thee, O Israel. If thou wilt hear, or if they will hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shalt thou worship any strange God. Hear this. <laughs> how many of us know that we have some strange gods around us? Even in your house. Uh-huh. <laughs> some of us, our houses becomes God. 
We have things that nobody could touch because that belonged to you. That's your God. Some people car, you pass and you bounce their car, they will kill you for that car. When I say bounce, not to dent it, you know, just to pass and touch the car. How you could touch my God? And they will shoot you for that. But God is saying that there shall be no strange God in us. Neither shall we worship them. And it's not only that we have some strange God amongst us. We also worship them. Money are some of us God. You know, uh, we could be told how much we need your finances in the church, your tithes and your offering. But no, I can't give that. If I give tithe, how much will leave out of that? But do you know <laughs> that when you do not give your tithe, because it does not really belong to you, you know that you lose much more than the tithe. You spend it, and you don't even know what you spend it on. Some of us spend it in the doctor's office. <laughs> Some of us spend it in buying bush medicine. Hello? Because we don't want to go to the doctor either. But we more rather... To give the tithe to the doctor than to give it to God whom it belonged to. It is not our own. It belonged to Almighty God. Why did I say that? I know. Is somebody I talking to personally? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Jesus. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 10. Listen to verse 10. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Uh, I know, I know, yes, I hear that. Well, Pastor Pax, I was never in Egypt. That what you think. <laughs> you were in Egypt. Uh, because you weren't saved. You didn't know God as your Savior. But God has brought you out of the world. He has brought you into his kingdom. Hello. And so we are at a different place. Uh... These days, uh, you know, in the States, a lot of people are, what ethnic group do you belong to? Uh, what nationality are you? And they could be offended based on what you say. I find a new way. Hear me. When they ask me that now, I tell them, my ethnicity is that I am a new creature. You can't fight me on that. Hey, I am black. I am white. I am Spanish. Hello. But I know who I am because I am a new creature. The Bible says, any man in Christ is a new creature. Hello? That mean any woman too? 
Yeah, sure, you mean that too. Right? So any man in Christ is a new creature. So I am a new creature. I belong to the kingdom of Almighty God. And folks, if we operate like that, we are going to find something really tremendous. Because being in the kingdom of God, we are reigning under a king. Hello? This is not King David. This is not King Jehoshaphat. But this is none other but King Jesus. Hallelujah! And hear me, because we are in Christ Jesus, we are in that kingdom, there is nothing that we have lack of. And hear what he says. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Then he says, you are not bastards. Hello? You are not beggars on the wayside. But he says, you are my subjects of the kingdom. And Jesus Christ is the king. And hear what the scripture tells me. He says, we are heirs and joint heir with him. So I'm reigning with him. Are you hearing that this morning? We are reigning with this Jesus. And hear what he says to us. He says, open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. And I will fill it. What are you opening your mouth to declare? What are you saying? We need to watch what we say. And this scripture has been with me for a while. Every time I go to speak, this has to come in. Because it is so relevant in the day in which we are living in. You and I can change our communities. We can change our surrounding by the things that comes from our mouth. And by the way we walk in our excellence with Almighty God, we can change situations among us. There's no time for us to keep telling our children, oh, you're stupid, or you could never make anything good. Hear me? It doesn't matter what's going on with them. You're a good child. You're a good child. And look for the things that they do that is good and commend them for it. Let them know that you are proud of them. They are not doing well in school. Tell them, you are a bright child. And you could make it. Listen, do you understand the verse, first scripture I read? And God said, let us. How did God create everything that he made? By his mouth. Hello? We were created in his image. After his likeness, let us do the same. Let's change our world. By our excellent spirit, by the things we say, by the way we operate on the earth. Uh, in one, I think it's in the Passion, where he says, open your mouth wide, decree a thing. And then he says, watch me. <laughs> you just decree the thing. And God says, watch me. In other words, you could now sit down and look at God. And he says, I will bring it to pass. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, I'm not finished, but I've got to stop. So um, let me just thank you so much for the opportunity 
to be here this morning and to share with you and trust that we all will rise and begin to walk in that excellent spirit and to see God change, transform our lives. And it is no telling what God is able to do with us.